Good morning. Welcome to the Grace Hub. So nice to see all you guys here today. Uh, did anybody get uh, too much sun yesterday? <laughs> yes, yeah, got to be careful. Even if you're in Illinois, you know, you never know how strong Mr. Sun's going to be. I found it interesting uh, that both the ancient world as well as our current times do not have a clear acceptance or understanding of the demonic or diabolical evil active in the world. Today's gospel sounds like an amazing surreal picture where this man, possessed by a legion, thousands upon thousands of demons, calls out to Jesus and enacts, and Jesus enacts an amazing miracle upon him of power by sending the demons into the swine to then careen off a cliff to their death. They basically drowned. Today, we would probably have the same reaction, you know, of unbelief, uh, but uh, would almost not want to seek understanding of how this happened. I mean, the Gerasenes were terrified. We just heard that in the gospel reading. They're like, okay, uh, you can go now, you know, they, this was too much for them to handle, hearing that. Um, which, you know, leads me to reflect on um, this past Sunday's mass shooting in Florida. Everyone who has pretty much drawn up an initial assessment of the situation, choosing to polarize the evil sin into uh, political sides, uh, social issues, or choosing to finger point uh, to religious fanaticism and gun control, whether or not those are factors in this, um, you know, the plain and most profound truth uh, is basically humanity, and murder. Perhaps it goes beyond capping the story to mere uh, political religious fanaticism. You know, this guy was probably driven as a lone wolf ISIS plant here, in a sense. Or thinking or entertaining for a moment that this was truly, purely, a unadulterated act of calculated evil. Evil standing alone, working through a man's blackened heart to kill uh, nearly 40, um, 50 people. I believe it was 49 people is the last number. And wound about 53 more with a barrage of bullets. Looking at the nature of evil and the accountability behind this man's actions should help us not to clutter up our realizing that the power of evil is very real. It was real enough some 15 years earlier to use two jet airliners to take down the Twin Towers, which were filled with something like 3,000 plus people. These moments, those moments, however, almost don't seem real. We see the headlines, we watch the uh, news on TV, uh, more horrible murders this weekend. It's been surreal here. Anybody who um, lives in Chicago proper, I just can't imagine, you know, what people are thinking in regards to the murder rate has just gone up exponentially. But how do we think about the other active battlefields? These battlefields I'm referring to is spiritual warfare. The turf is your heart and you are fighting Satan. Yes, this is using and looking through a lens of faith, not fantasy, but definitely reality. Harboring faith as a postmodern Christian uh, against bur a burgeoning godless culture is getting more and more difficult to do. This is because people are becoming more and more divided where the new stumbling blocks to growing in Christ have become politics, personal social agendas, and secular control. Um, as some of you know, I've been uh, watching as a spectator this uh, one site on social media where people are <laughs> throw down the gauntlet and go into uh, horrible battles. And these are all pastors and things. And, you know, it gets kind of nasty and it just... My gosh, guys, you know, <laughs> I mean, outside of arguing about, you know, it's all about politics, it's all about this, why don't we, like, stay to the picture here, thou shalt not kill, 
this man murdered in cold blood. Some postmodern Chris Christians call this progress. Uh, is it really progress, though, when we find creative ways to make Christ and his transformative work in our lives mythology and irrelevant to our own agendas? We are certainly a culture in love with the scarlet letter. Everybody is categorized, pigeonholed, etc. You know, everybody has their neat little place that they've been compartmentalized into. Um, you know, it, 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 it's not only is a way to pigeonhole people, but it alienates, uh, alienates ourselves further away from the truth. The gospel is calling us to truly be accountable to. You know, the gospel message, as I said, is that one string banjo a lot of times. You know, the core of the gospel truth is very simple, but we've made it very complex. Just the other day, and, and praying for the victims of this tragedy among uh, amongst this uh, another bloody weekend in Chicago, past weekend as well, I found an interesting quote online uh, by the founder of WikiLeaks, uh, Julian Assange. He says something very profound here. Every time we witness an injustice and do not act, we train our character to be passive in its presence and thereby eventually lose all ability to defend ourselves and those we love. I then posted this on social media and someone posted it almost immediately afterwards, uh, you know, better do some good research, this guy's been accused of rape. Actually, in looking up current views upon him, uh, it is speculative, or as to say, the court is still in a session on that. Um, what we have to be careful about is beyond the circumstances of the man who made this quote. Did the person really hear or read what was said? Did the person who, you know, got mad that I posted, oh, you know, he's, he's a rapist, and though the, you know, the jury's in thing. Did she even take the time to really read that quote and think about what it was saying? Going back to what happened in Florida, can we purely strip away to the raw evil and feel compassion and pain for our neighbors who were slaughtered in cold blood? I, um, one newscaster was going on and on interviewing someone who was just uh, relaying this horrible story. Uh, she was in the bathroom. And, you know, she was seeing dead bodies falling and, and, and blood everywhere, and it was just horrific. You know, I mean, uh, you just can't imagine what she was feeling. Can we think about a human being murdering 50 people without the other labels? I don't think so. It's been usurped most successfully to Satan's delight to be a tool for political and social agenda fodder where maybe we're blinded to the root causes of evil active in the things we do and say. How we return to seeing and facing the reality of evil is through being accountable spiritually in how our hearts are being shaped. That first church, you know, that the first, it goes back to the first church as being pretty important here. Are we allowing our hearts to be shaped by and for Christ Jesus and his gospel of grace and promise? Or how is it being shaped by the gospel of the world and its ruler, Satan? Are we purely living into a false empire of progress as a kind of self-idolatry? The mirror of the law, St. Paul talks about in this, this week's segment from Galatians, leads to a beautiful promise of our spiritual formation progress being how we realize not only what Christ Jesus gave us at the cross and uh, through his resurrection, but how we live it by faith and to know our true heritage, to know our true heritage as his sons and daughters. The battlefield is real and it goes beyond the physical. Uh, the verbal plane of assaults uh, we inflict upon one another, uh, further dividing our hearts from reaching out in love to care for neighbor. You know, uh, I don't know how many people th uh, 
recall this, but it's been nearly 70-something years since the close of World War II. I wonder how many people spend the time to think about the reality of evil and its consequences seen through the rise of Hitler in the, and in the hearts of many to commit horrible crimes against humanity and horrendous crimes. Do we dismiss it easily to the consequences of history, government, and sanity? How many could entertain it as Satan's attempt in that century to rise and he eventually fell or, well, Hitler uh, killed himself? Uh, in this past century to complete his rule in the world. Is he rising again through ISIS? We don't know. That's the tall order. Maybe we don't want to think about it too much and dismiss it to something more comfortable and tangible we can understand. Hitler knew the power of the scriptures. This was what's scary. He actually used, I don't know how many verses it was, but he, he used a segment of Romans 13 to start many of his propaganda speeches to a desperate people in Germany. Uh, and this would eventually sway uh, them to his diabolical plan of death and destruction. The legion of demons knew the power of Jesus, his words which drove them into the swine. Which to, which do we choose? to hear and believe more deeply. The point of recounting these examples of evil in history is, not, uh, is to inwardly look within ourselves to test and challenge our own beliefs. You know, you wonder why the season of Pentecost is like 10 miles long or <laughs> till like November something. As, you know, it's all this kind of introspection and lessons that the Holy Spirit needs to teach us. And, you know, th this is one of those lessons. You know, have we equipped and taken our developing faith seriously as well as enough? Do, what do we pick and choose? Is Satan helping us to inadvertently to choose to be indifferent to the truth? I kind of wonder. Is he helping us to build theological and ideological walls against one another, where harboring faith yet alone living into it becomes irrelevant to our own gospel. We are both saint and sinner, but this doesn't have to be a death sentence. You can allow the gospel and the Holy Spirit to open and prepare your heart for battle. I choose to grow in my faith, harbor a lens of faith, being living into the promise and grace of God through hope and prayerful action. Not for myself, but I know and live for God. Live and love for God and my neighbor. Compassion is not only a two-way street. The evil one makes this so. Instead of living into the label of being a postmodern Christian, why don't we live into the present as a child of God, as children of God under his law of love? Why can't we look all around us and remove all those labels Satan has created to become stumbling blocks to the real progress Christ Jesus gospel needs us to realize in the here and now of our transforming lives of faith? This needs to become a personal creed to fuel your daily journey as a disciple of Jesus. Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Upon the cross, he indeed defeated sin, death, and the power of the devil to start our journey of faith as children of grace and promise. If we can truly confess and reflect that evil is real in the world, then this is half the battle. If we can affirm and not deny the reality of things, only Christ and his Holy Spirit can shape, then we can recognize and develop our faith's spiritual formation to God's will, not our own. In order to realize the peace of Christ, we must go on that internal battlefield, we must go there. It is a battlefield where the turf is your heart and Satan is the force 
trying to overtake it. We have this one solitary life, this one solitary earthly life. We must choose uh, to live it beyond ourselves or live it selfishly. Living it beyond ourselves is a part of the process of survival. Let us pray. Gracious and loving Lord, help us to prepare for that daily spiritual warfare battle. Help us to not be wound up in ourselves to the evil one's glory and lose the battle in loving and living beyond ourselves. Through grace, may we harbor a great hope. May we live into that hope as your children. For your gospel and glory alone. Amen.